Good Wednesday morning to you from the Florence International Church in Florence, Italy. My name is Pastor Randy McGeehy and I am privileged today to be able to bring to you this devotional thought for this week. From Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 we read the following passage of Scripture. A few days later when Jesus again entered Capernaum the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the man uh, to where on the map that he was lying upon. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that. He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, Take your mat and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to this man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. In Mark chapter 1, we find Jesus began his very public ministry in the city of Capernaum. He entered the town and immediately began to preach about the kingdom of of God. In that chapter, Jesus also demonstrated his great and marvelous power. He cast out demons and he healed diseases of every sort. From Mark 1.32, we learn that Jesus must have healed nearly every sick person in the town. His miracles eclipsed his message. The people flocked to Jesus to see what he would do next. Each miracle left them hungry for more. To escape this frenzy, Jesus and his four disciples left Capernaum and began preaching a preaching tour through Galilee. Now, that preaching tour is over in Jesus and his men returned to Capernaum. This town was an important place in the life and in the ministry of Jesus Christ. Capernaum served as a northern headquarters for his ministry. It was here that he put his great healing power on public display. It was here that he preached in power. It was here in Capernaum that Jesus Christ made his very public claims to be the Messiah. But Capernaum had a problem. This city valued the miracles more than the message of the Messiah. They wanted the spectacular 
and they rejected our Lord's offer of salvation. And as a result, Jesus later pronounced a curse upon this city in Luke chapter 10 and verses 13 through 15. Those who have received much from the hand of the Lord and rejected it will face the greater judgment as said in Luke 12, 48. You know, I would rather go to hell from anywhere than from a pew in a Bible-believing, quote-unquote, church. So Jesus and his men returned to Capernaum. We are told that they enter into the house. This is probably a reference to the home of Peter. They entered town with no fanfare, but would soon come to the point where they got out that Jesus was back in Capernaum. And when the people heard that the miracle worker had returned, they flocked to the house where he was staying. Churches have to deal with all kinds of rumors, even in the day in which we now live. Most of the rumors started on churches are negative in their nature. The greatest rumor that can get out on a church is for people to start hearing the rumor that Jesus is in the church. When that word gets out, people will start coming. Jesus has drawing power. We find that referenced in John 12, verse 32. You see, when he is lifted up, the word gets out. And what happens is the people will come. Jesus is in the house and the crowds have come to see him and to see what he will do. Let's all determine to lift Jesus up and ask him into our churches and our homes today and just set back and see what he will do in our midst. I believe he has something very special when we welcome him into our lives. God bless you today from the Florence International Church. We want you to know that our heart is a heart of prayer and trust and faith for each and every one of you. We invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 8.30 at www.florenceinternationalchurch.com where our Sunday message will be preached and proclaimed. Please enter into that time with us together. And if you have any prayer needs or prayer requests, please email them to us at florenceinternationalchurch at gmail.com and we will not only pray, but we will reach out to you in the love of Jesus Christ. God bless you today. May the remainder of this week be filled with his presence, his love, and his power.